Andy, you switched. There's quite a few parallels between you guys. You started in single seaters, hill climbing, Formula Three. You made, you went to touring cars. You won races in the British Series, and then you went on to take three world titles. It's something that you don't regret that career change, obviously. No, I, I think um, there comes a time in everyone's career where you, you've got to realise that. Um, the momentum may not be in your career in that particular discipline for whatever reason, whether it's financial or just results or whatever. And um, you know, I, I felt very early on that I wanted to be a professional driver and could have easily been left on the shelf, struggling to find the next million dollars or whatever to go to the next level. So I had a great opportunity to drive uh, the Vauxhall at uh, Alton Park and had a great race and, and did all right. And that just opened the door to touring cars. And I think, as Paul said, you know, you've got to become a professional driver at some point. You've got to get real about your career. And uh, that was a, my feeling was very positive about moving into touring car racing. And I'm really pleased I did it. Did you stick it on pole first time out, the, the Astra? I, I did, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, uh, uh, well, way beyond my belief. But um, yeah, I had, a, had a, a great, uh, a good car. I mean, a car that was capable of winning. And um, yeah, I mean, I just went straight in from cold testing. I, went, I was Formula 3 the day before, testing at Pembury, a circuit you probably know very well. And then, yeah, put it on pole the next day at, Brand, at uh, Alton Park. So, yeah, I think it's like, like everything. Sometimes these things are meant to happen, and you, then you've got to maximize that opportunity. And, and that's what I did, and, uh, and I really never regret it. It's, a, it's great to be driving for a manufacturer and having a career and feeding the family and, you know, doing what I love. So I'm very, very fortunate to be uh, one of those paid drivers. How did the BMW thing come out? Because you're very much in bed with BMW, three world championships, a European title. You are their main man. Uh, how did that all start? Well, I, I had a good season in, um, with Honda in the British Touring Car Championship. And um, at that time, BMW were in the European Touring Cars. And BMW UK wanted to be involved in, in uh, European Touring Car Racing. Uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunities with the regulations for them to drive in the British Touring Car. So... Yeah, I mean, my name was put forward and uh, more than one person put my name forward. And then, yeah, I took, did the deal, expecting to be really beaten in European because I didn't know the circuits. And, of course, you were racing against guys like you've raced against, Tarquini and Giovinardi and Ivan Muller and all the guys that know the circuits really well. But had a great first year, nearly won the championship. And then the second year I did win the European Touring Car Championship and then never really looked back and... I think once you've got momentum and you've got success with a manufacturer, it's not easy to, uh, to walk away from that. You want to stay with them and, and maximise your history. So never look back, really. Paul, I guess you keep an eye on, on, on the situation in, in Britain and around the world in the Touring Car Championships. What do you think of the British Touring Car Championship at the moment? We don't have perhaps the, uh, the same number of star drivers or star manufacturers, but the racing is still really good. I follow, you're right, I follow the racing, and the racing is still tremendous. Uh, sure, it's not what it used to be, but um, I think the racing is, is you know, still, it's still how we left it, door-to-door, -door, you know, wheel-to-wheel, -wheel and, and uh, a little bit of biffing and barging. So um, the racing hasn't changed, sure, the faces have and so forth, but um, I think the racing's still very, very entertaining. Quick word about um, trading paint with the likes of Andy Rouse and John Cleland. That just golden, golden years. Yeah, they were hard blokes, weren't they, those guys? And, um, they still are. <laughs> well, Cleland is. Look, you know, from, from my 10 years of racing the British Touring Car Championship, uh, you know, the, it was the highlight of, the, you know, they, they were the days that I starred in and, and enjoyed the most, and that was when I was the pinnacle of, of, of my career and uh, the days that, uh, that I'll ch uh, cherish um, forever. Andy, um, 2010, a scaled-back BMW effort. We just heard that Seat are out. Um, Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, title number four, thanks very much. Um, only two cars, only two proper um, works supported, if you like, BMWs. Um, what can you do? Well, I, I think um, it's a shame to lose a manufacturer, but um, unfortunately the way that the championship has been the last two or three years with the diesel power against petrol, um, it's never going to work. So uh, I think that next, well, 2010 for BMW is what they call like a sabbatical year. But in fact, it's not a scaled down program. I mean, I've got my busiest ever year ahead of me with World Touring Cars. I've got an exceptionally quick teammate that I've got to try and beat, Augusto Farfus. He's probably one of the fastest uh, touring car drivers around at the moment. And uh, I've got a great program in GT Racing with BMW, Le Mans, uh, Nürburgring 24 hour, and lots of, uh, well, I should say, races that haven't been announced yet, which are looking really exciting. So I've got a busy year ahead of me.